Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting edition of River Cuisine. I'm here today with everybody's favourite chef, Dennis Vaughan from the Royal Coachman. Nice to see you again, nice Dennis. Nice to see you, Shannon. And we're going to cook up some lamb for you today. Now, Dennis, tell me, what are we doing first and throughout the course of the show? Well, we're going to have a little bit of fun today. We have a number of recipes to prepare. Uh, first off, we're going to be preparing an Indian curry ragu. Oh, um, uh, that's, this is what Marjorie w wanted us to refer to as the Indian chow chow? Yeah. Oh, okay. Indian Indian curry. How about that? That's right. And it, it's rather it's not too hot. It's it's all as hot as you want it to make. So we're just going to make it the way we want it. But and if people at home want to make it any hotter, they can adjust. This it. will be a new menu item on the Coachman menu. It will be. Yes. Good. We are going to be coming out with it in about four to five weeks. So Good. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And then after that, we're going to be preparing one of our specialty items: a slow braised uh, lamb shank with a rosemary and Dijon jus. And after that, we will be preparing rack of lamb oh, with the Dijon herb crusted. And a Greek dish, a padakia dish, it's with lamb chops. Sounds good. Yeah. So, let's get down to business. What okay, first? first off, we're going to be preparing just a little bit of mise en place for the curry. And of course, we need ginger and onion. So, okay. we need to cut that onion in half in a fine dice, a very fine dice. The smaller the dice, the... The more, the more starch will come out of the curry. Okay, you do this half, we'll have dueling knives, see who goes time yeah. trials on the knives, we're, right? We're, we're not going to um, be adding any flour to this at all. All of the starch will come out of the ginger and the onion. Okay, so what, how are you doing this? You're not so cutting I'm, it right I'm the way through? So I'm basically cutting it part way through and, and using my knuckle guiding it through. I use my fingernails. If anything weird happens in here, you know what that is. Oh, he's ahead of me. And then just very, very fine, very, very thin strokes. I think you'll find it easier if you use this part of the blade between here and oh, here. Oh, so down here more? Yeah. He's going to take over for me any minute. I, I can I wouldn't feel do that. it. I wouldn't do that at all. And that's basically it. Very fine. Oh, I'm, see, I'm falling apart here at the end. That's okay. Here, let's take this It doesn't guy. have to be perfect. It's all, it's a, it will all cook together and fall apart during the cooking process. So okay. it doesn't have to be perfect at all. So however you oh, like look it. at how much finer your dice is than mine. Here, let me go at it for a bit here. Sure. There you go. That's fine. That's perfect. And we can start on the ginger after we get the onion out of the way. Okay. And the ginger is once again a, a fine slivery dice. Now, you've, you're going to peel this one, right? And, and yeah. I'm just going to have at this one. Now, it's really very important to peel your garlic. It, it, if you leave the peel ginger. on or <laughs> the <laughs> ginger, it'll, it'll, it'll leave a very bitter flavor within your dish. So it's very important that you take it off. It I is love very the smell stringy. of ginger. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's starting to get to my eyes. Yeah. It's the onions. Onions and ginger. Beautiful. So that's that. See, I got myself ahead of you here. Good call. <laughs> that's because you're going way faster anyhow. This won't take long at all. Once we get this done, then we can start our cooking process on the curry. It does take a, a rather large amount of oil. But uh, because we're not adding any roux to it, there will be the shortage of the butter from the roux. Okay. So now, tell me again how this thickens itself? Uh, the ginger and garlic and onion have natural starches within it. And as it cooks, it will thicken the product. Okay. Just like a cornstarch would thicken or a flour. So that's it. That's a ton of ginger. Ooh, and we're going to be adding a lot more. Yeah? Yes. If you'd like to take that. Okay right over here. Here's your vegetable oil. Um, we'll put that on a high heat. Add about a quarter cup of vegetable oil into your pan. Look at this. Is this your favorite pan? It is. It's all bent up. <laughs> it works beautiful. Okay. The quarter, old pans are the best pans. Quarter cup. Quarter cup. How does that look? A little touch more. Good. Beautiful. Okay. Now that the oil is hot, she can add the ginger and the onion. Ginger first? Does it matter? It doesn't matter, no. As all long of this? As, yeah, all of it. And half of the other cup. Oh, that's smelling pretty oh, yes. good, isn't it? Oh, yes. That Beautiful. Good? That's perfect. And now yeah. all, of your, all of your onion. Right. And some of this other stuff here? Yes. How much? All of it. That's beautiful. Okay. Now give it a little stir. She's just going to sweat the products until it's translucent, not until it's turning brown. Oh, it's a wonderful smell, isn't it? Just it really is. So fragrant. It really is. Mm. 
How's that looking? That's looking really great. Now you can add your curry seasoning. I would recommend if, uh, when you buy your curry, ask for a Madras curry. Uh, there are different varieties of Madras curry. You can dump that right the in. The whole works? The whole works. That's about three quarters of a cup of curry. And stir it around, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Now you can see why you needed a little extra oil because the powder of the curry will soak up most of the oil. Mm -hmm. and we'll just saute that up a touch until it's, it's until the flavorings of the curry have come out. You don't want to burn it at all. So now what kind of lamb are we using for this, Dennis? We've for this we're going to be using uh, the leg of the lamb and we haven't cut any fat off of the, off of the lamb at all. The more, the more of the fat, the more tender it's going to become and the more flavorful it'll become. Without the fat, it'll be rather bland. So we don't, we don't want to be talking about heart health or anything while we're cooking this dish? No. Okay. We'll just but it is very wonderful. Mm -hmm. Taking into consideration, it's traditionally served with rice pilaf and roti bread, so it is quite healthy in a way. Okay, now that that's happened, we can, um, I would suggest adding just a little more oil to it. Okay. That's perfect. Now we can take two tablespoons of tomato paste. So how much is this here, Dennis? This is not two tablespoons, is it? No, this is going to be used for the lamb shank as, as okay. well. So, so what do we want about that? That looks beautiful. That's enough? No rolls. Two tablespoons, three tablespoons. That's good. Like so? Perfect. And you can pick up the lamb. And you Am can, I going to stir this in first? Or? You can do it before. You can stir the, stir the tomato paste in well, with, the, with the lamb or before the lamb. There's really no rolls to that. Little, little go. And just so we've got some nice bits of... Put it in. Just New Zealand it in. spring yep. lamb here. New Zealand spring lamb. Spring lamb is a, is a sheep and it is between five months and 12 months old. And after that, it's... And after that, um, it's generally considered mutton, uh, which is a very overpowering, flavorful animal. Uh, a lot of marketing boards are, are calling it actually yearling now. Anything that's over a year, they're calling it yearling, trying to make it sound a little bit more attractive to the consumer. Unfortunately, people are buying the yearling, and when they actually eat it, it's too overpowering for them, so that when they actually come to a a restaurant and see lamb on the menu, they veer away from it because they've unfortunately had yearling, which oh, is had, mutton. I had the good fortune to visit New Zealand a number of years ago, and there they call it hogget when it gets to be a certain age. Hogget. Hogget. There, there's a little bit just of trivia like, for you, but you like didn't know that. It's like an old sow, a hogget. <laughs> hogget. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so how's this looking? So you're going to keep stirring that up until it's slightly browned. Okay. And some of the juices are coming out. And that's looking pretty good. So we've got a medium heat here? A medium heat. Okay. And as that's cooking, now we can start preparing our lamb shank because this will take about 10 minutes okay. to start cooking. It smells delicious. So we'll move your handle out of the way. All right. We'll turn this on high and you can add about a quarter cup of oil in that pan in for here. the lamb shanks. Do you want me to move that up to the top burner? Yeah, that would work. A quarter cup of oil again. Let's change, yeah. let's change places. Change the place. Not in my way. Whatever makes it easier. You always have to adapt to your kitchen. Make this it a, make it easier for yourself. So that's not going to burn, is it? No, it will not. Okay. Well, I'm going to hold. after I turn it I'm going to hold you to that. Okay, so we need about a quarter cup of oil in here. That's right. And what we're going to do is sear off the lamb shanks first. Okay. And these are the lamb shanks right yes. here. These are... So this is which which part of the little which well this part this, of the little this guy is, is basically this? if you were, if you were to have a little lamb skipping along <laughs> this the foot would be here, and this is basically the ankle ankle part. So oh, that's a little graphic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna fire these. You might want to use the tongs for that. The oil will spit at your hands. Oh, I can see. Yeah, it is spitting at me. All three going in. All three. Now the only purpose of the searing is for your browning effect. Um, most people believe that when you sear a product it will actually uh, help retain its juices, which is a falsity. Um, a lot of chefs would a lot of chefs would disagree with me at that, a lot of the older world chefs, but uh, it's a well known fact that it actually will help release the juices more. Hmm. Uh, a little tip at, at home when I prepare this, I just don't even bother searing it. I just uh, go with my method and without the searing process. And it still browns well enough in the oven where you have the coloring. With your own method. There's no rules to your method. No rules. There. No rules. Whatever is easiest. 
And while you're stirring, uh, tossing those, you can stir your curry. So now this is a tougher cut of meat. It's going to require a little it's bit a longer. It's a very tough cut of meat, which is why we're going to be braising it. It's going to need approximately, for this amount of uh, shank, you're going to be needing at least a two and a half hour cooking time at 350 degrees. Okay. And it will be covered, hence the term braising. Um, but when it is prepared, it will literally fall off the bone and it's so succulent and juicy. It's beautiful. Now, it's too bad our viewers couldn't smell this because it's really, this is just beautiful. There we go. We're getting a little effect on that now. You know, I'm standing far away so I don't get burned. I know, I see that. Yeah, <laughs> send me close. Send me there into the line of fire. Line so of what fire. would we traditionally be serving with lamb shanks, Dennis? Well, once again, there's really no rules. Um, I generally like preparing a roasted garlic mashed potato. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is going to have a nice rich sauce that goes along yes, with it. Yes, it is. Some people serve it with um, lentils, with a lentil ragu as well, and that's mm -hmm. very nice. Um, potatoes, rice, whatever Just you whatever really you want, like. but traditionally potatoes. A smashed potato type yeah. of thing. So is this going to be quite spicy or? It's not going to be spicy at all. We're going to be adding some Dijon and tomato paste and oh, red wine. Lovely. And that looks pretty good. So now, if you want to take the red wine, and I'm just going to get a bowl. Okay, so what kind of red wine do we have happening here? This is Mission Hill red wine. Uh huh. Just um, put it in the bowl. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Beautiful. There we go. And you can take some tomato paste, all the rest of that tomato paste, and put it in. Oh, it seems a shame to do that to a good bottle of wine, doesn't it? Well, it's all part of the effect. I guess so. Okay, I'm going to mix this around a little bit. Yeah, and we're not finished yet. Okay. We have some rosemary. You can throw in a full sp two sprigs of rosemary into that. Just like that? Not, yeah. not going to do anything else You can chop it? it if you wish, but it's not really necessary. It's one of my favorite herbs. I love that. So it's I'm going to give it a little extra dash there. Okay. And I actually have some other stuff here for you. We've got some black pepper. Mm -hmm. How much of that? Oh, however much you want. How spicy do you want it? Yeah, a looks, teaspoon? That's good. That looks pretty good. And about a tablespoon and a half of seasoning salt. Okay. You like my measuring? That's Home style cooking, it's beautiful. It's exactly how A little I, bit of bay leaf. It's exactly how I do it at home. One or two of those. You can put uh, all of them in. Okay. Yeah. There's about four bay leaves there. And of course, the regular salt. Go easy on the regular salt, about a teaspoon. You can always re-season your product after it's been prepared. During, during the actual cooking, it's always better to lean back a little bit. You can always add more to it in the end. How are my shanks coming? I'm just gonna give them a little flip here. Looks pretty good, Dennis. And I know you just did this, but I'm going to give it a little stir anyhow. So I'm just going to put this here for a second. We'll turn this off. And those can be placed in the pan. Just going to grab a little bit of water for, for the curry now. Okay. And what we'll do is you can add the water right directly into the, the mixture. So about how much water we got Put happening? Put it all. You've, we've, we're we're going to start with approximately two and a half cups of water. And we can always add more as it thickens up. As I said, the, uh, the, the ginger, the onion, oh, so and the garlic will slightly thicken it up. Yeah, that's very thick. That's nice. Okay, now oh, we're going to so just pour that over top. Okay. And then we will just grab a little bit of water for this as well. Okay. And so we don't need garlic or anything else in here? Yes, we will be adding a whole lot of garlic. Okay. <laughs> you should have known. You know me, Shannon. Yeah, I, I do. love the I garlic. Know. Okay, we're just going to put that up and in until it's three quarters covered. Okay. And that garlic there. This little bit of garlic right here? Mm -hmm. How much of this little bit of garlic am you I adding? You can put one third of it. Around, yeah. Oh, put more, what the heck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good for Beautiful. you, right? Yeah, that's it. There we go. Okay, we're going to cover this now. We're going to cover this. And it goes into the oven at? 325 degrees. For? For approximately two and a half hours. Okay. And here's some wrap for you.
It doesn't look work. like much right now, but believe me, in, in the next little while, it's going to come out and it's just going to be the best thing on earth. This is not going to work, Dan. How about if we just put it in the oven right now and we'll cover it later? Okay. Okay. We're out of saran wrap? Out of tinfoil? There we go. And how's our curry coming along? Okay, we can, we can leave that on a very low heat and we can just let that go. And that's basically it for that, for that two dishes. And then we can come back and um, start the other two with the rack of lamb Excellent. and the padaccia. Okay. a rack of lamb. So we've got the lamb shanks braising in the oven. They're yes, going to be take two and a half hours. We've got the curry bubbling on top of the stove. That's yes. going to cook for about how long? That'll cook for about an hour and 15 minutes. And you're going to serve that with a basmati rice? Over a basmati rice. Okay. Yes. And it's 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 a of great concern to just check your, your curry now and again and add water as you need it because it will reduce and sometimes you do have to replenish that loss supply of water. Mm -hmm. in it. Same with the lamb shanks, check it after 45 minutes and you can always add another cup of water to okay. it or two. The curry tastes great by the way, I had a little belt of it while we were taking a break. <laughs> yes we did. Very good. If it is a little on the spicy side, it's recommended that you can actually add chopped mango okay. or that'll pear sweeten it up a and that'll, that'll sweeten it up and, and take away some of that kick. Mm -hmm. And uh, also when you're serving it, you can put on um, a, a yogurt, a mint yogurt on the top, just dollop, dollop oh, it on top good. as you would like a borscht with sour cream, so mm -hmm. that's quite nice. Okay, so we're going to do so, a rack of lamb. Rack of lamb is here, and it generally comes with about eight to nine bones. The gen, uh, general serving is only five bones, so what we're going to do is we're going to break it down. First, the, the top skin part, this is called fell, F-E-L-L. -L. Fell, okay. And some people, what they do is they just take their knife, and they will skin it like such mm -hmm. and, and rip the fell off and then, and then serve it like that. But right. that's kind of cheesy. We, we just take the whole back strap off. Okay. And it's a bit of a chore, but it can be done. And so what are we going to do with this? That's, there, there's a fair bit of meat in there. Yes, we're going to be using this for a stock. We will take the meat off and we will use that for soup. Okay, so I'll go through that once we get the lamb finished. Okay. So after you've got that, you've got your loin of meat in this section, so you don't want to be cutting any of that, obviously. Right. So you take your French knife, and you basically feel where the loin ends. I can see that. And there's a little bit of fat right after that. Mm -hmm. So you'll take your knife and you'll cut it just after the fat. Okay. And you'll cut it all the way down. Right down to the bone. Right down to the bone, and you'll see that there's a bit of a, a flap there. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is take your knife and cut all the way down. Right down to the bone. Right down. And once again, this can be used for stock. That's in our stock pot. So now that's part of the Frenching. And now we're going to crown it. And crowning, you basically pull your bones apart a little bit. And you run your knife along the side of the bone, okay. right to the end of your cut. And, and then come through. Oh, I see. And that's for soup. And more for the stock pot. That's right. Well, this part here is really wonderful for scotch broth soup. Mm -hmm. So we'll save that and dice that up for soup. So you're wanting a fairly sharp knife to do this? Yes, you would definitely prefer a sharp knife to get close to the bone. Now see, this is the part I've always missed. I love rack of lamb. It's among my favorite things. And actually, actually, the first time I ever tasted lamb is when I went to the University of Victoria, fresh out of high school, and I lived in the residence there, and they were serving roast leg of lamb in the cafeteria. Oh, wonderful. No, it wasn't. No? No, it was awful. They it served mutton? Vile! They I'm served, sure they served it was yearling? Oh, it was awful! <laughs> it was overcooked and, and they, I think they put the, limp, the mint sauce right in the gravy. It was terrible. Oh. It was absolutely horrible. So then, several years later, when I, when I had the opportunity to travel to New Zealand, I was somewhat worried because I knew I was going to be served lamb somewhere along the line. Well, that's However, a, that's, that's it was cooked properly and it was absolutely delicious. I've loved it ever since then. Well, that's the problem with lambs. There's so many people that prefer medium well and well done meat and with lamb you just can't have it prepared that way. It'll be too tough mm -hmm. and dry. Mm -hmm. All of the goodness comes out of it. So if you're going to be preparing anything like this at home, I would certainly recommend nothing over medium. Medium rare is beautiful. Medium is okay. Unless of course you're braising it or doing a curry that's or right. something like that. So now there's, there's our crown. It looks lovely. And you can go one step further and actually scrape your bones of the tendons and make them all clean. That would be for presentation purposes, but for your home, 
there's really no need to now, do that. This is, but this is something you could also have the butcher do especially for you if you, if you weren't inclined to do it yourself. That's true, but you're going to pay the price. Yeah. <laughs> you get okay, what so, you pay for. So let's see, we've got two, four, six, eight bones on this one. We're one shy, but that's fine. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to take the smaller end for the chops. So you, you cut in between your bones. I'm so glad you're doing this. Yeah. Normally it works. Because I'm on TV, it won't. There we go. <laughs> there you go. So we want five bones, two, four, six left. And, and that's it. We're going to be using these guys for a different dish a little later on. So we have a beautiful lamb chop here, and that'll be used for our padakia, which will be prepared later on. Okay. So that's part of it. And now we're going to cut it in half because this is what's going to, this is what it's going to turn so out. So this as. is a serving right here you'd have. That's one serving. So we'll cut it in half. So you'll notice that we've got three bones on one side, mm -hmm. two bones on the other. And that's purposely done so that they'll come together. Like so? Like so. So now if you want to get your hands dirty. Okay, that's always my favorite thing to do. You can slather the mustard very liberally on the, the, the front, on the complete back, and on the sides. And on the sides. Like not on not the bones, on the though. bone section. Okay. And we've got a Dijon mustard here. It's a Dijon mustard, yes, from France. And after that's done, you can just dip it into our breadcrumbs. Now, are these breadcrumbs herbed with anything? These breadcrumbs have uh, rosemary, black pepper, and some thyme. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't use the regular breadcrumbs from the store. These are actually a panko breading. It's a, it's a pure white, a panko breading uh -huh. product. It's a okay. Japanese breading product. And it's a pure, it's a pure white uh, breading. It doesn't have any of the brown crusting put through it, which I prefer. It's just personal preference. Okay. There you go. So then you can just pat it in. And rosemary lends itself extremely well to lamb, doesn't it? Oh, it it's does. And you can even go further and put mint sauce into your breadcrumbs and, and when that you mix like it up. That would be like the mint sauce in the Graveyard yeah. University. Well, no, well, no, no. <laughs> this, this would only be an enhancement. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be okay. an awful thing. That is turning out absolutely beautiful. Look at I can do this. You can do this. It's so? almost idiot proof. <laughs> well, that's what I call it at work, yeah. an idiot proof kind of a thing. So okay, that we'll put that there in between these guys. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. So these are going to, we're going to bake these? We're going to bake those at a rather high temperature, 375 degrees, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't take any more than 12 to 14 minutes to cook wow. in a preheated oven. Okay. Because as I said, you do want it at a medium rare. Now, if you do want to go on the medium well, well, then it will take up to up to 18 to 20 minutes. Okay, that's so that's a really quick dish. It looks spectacular, sir. Very quick. Very and what quick. are you going to serve this with? We're going to be serving this with a chateau potato. That's mm -hmm. a barrel-shaped potato, which uh, we can show you. You're going to make me do that a little later. Make you do that a little with later. that sharp knife. With this very sharp knife. Okay, I'm ready. We'll see how many band-aids we need. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, let's get ready that's for that's it then. Very good then. So our next dish, a Greek padakia. Now I, I do have to tell you that Greek is among my favorite cuisines. Oh, I wonderful! It. It's mine as well. Yeah. Lots of garlic. Lots of garlic. Oregano, lots of oregano. Lots of lemon. Rosemary, yeah, yeah, lemon. Good. So, so Greek padakia is next, and we've got the lamb chops that we took off of the racks. That's right. Okay. And what are we going to do with them? Well, basically, they're in a bowl, and there's, as you said, just three main ingredients. But we're going to add also the salt and pepper and such, okay. and of course, red wine to let it marinate a touch. Mm -hmm. um, so we can take a couple tablespoons of garlic. But you know, Greeks go crazy. A couple <laughs> of tablespoons of garlic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, beautiful. That's oh yeah, look. baby. A uh, little bit of <laughs> onion. A little bit being. A little bit. A couple tablespoons. Like so. Yeah, that's good. A uh, couple pinches of black pepper. However much you want, little or lots. Oh, don't be shy. A little bit more. Yeah. There we go. And oregano. We have some dried again. oregano here. Yes. Now, if we're using fresh oregano, are we going to use more or less? You would use less. Okay. And if, you're, if you were to use uh, one tablespoon of oregano, there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon, so therefore you would use one teaspoon. It's math. Yes, it is. Divide it by three. Can you use too much oregano in Greek? Yeah, you can. It can get too bitter, but uh, a little, that's beautiful. Sounds good. Yeah. We have some seasoned salt here. Touch of seasoning salt, about a teaspoon. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, maybe a bit more. 
Good. Some regular Some salt. salt. Yeah. About the same. Same again. amount. Yeah. Looks good. And your lemon juice. Greeks and lemon. They love lemon. Yeah. Put so it all in. You're looking at a, about two ounces two, there. Two tablespoons. And of perhaps? course the red wine. How much? Uh, well, Not we we use two 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 ounces of that, so put about four ounces, five ounces. Good. And now all we have to do is mix it up. Make sure that it's all sitting pretty. Now, if you were to do this at home, I would strongly suggest you let it marinate for at least two hours. Okay, this has been marinating. But right, when, with by the, the magic time we potato, get it, it's, uh, by the time we get it to the stove, it'll yeah. marinated for two hours. So that's it, and you can smell this. It's it just, does. It smells wow. heavenly. Here, smell that. Can you smell? Can you that? smell that? Everybody? <laughs> Okay, oh, so now beautiful. we've got a pan that's already hot, ready okay. to go, and Shannon is going to pan fry them quickly. That's right. So those ingredients can go in in any order, Dennis. Again, it's the no rules cooking. There's no rules cooking, whatever order you want to sure. put them in. As long as you remember the three basic rules, lots of garlic, Lots of lemon, okay. and don't forget the oregano. Now, see all these goodies left in this little bowl? Yeah. Now, you don't want to, we really don't want to overload the pan too much, so like, that's perfect. Like I've just we done? Have just as much, we have just as much food okay. in there as we need. So, that's good. what's going to happen with my marinade? Oh, we can save that for another day. Okay. It's got at least a three-day shelf life if it's kept in the refrigerator, and you can keep reusing good. it. So I would use that for other for meats, more of course. <laughs> For lamb souvlaki. Okay, so I'm just going to braise these off or saute them for about how long? It should only take about a half of a minute just to get them brown. Okay. Oh, it smells good. While that's cooking, you might want to stir your curry. I'm just going to move these around so they're all touching the bottom. And we are going to finish them in the oven. She's just going to brown the, brown the two sides and then put them in the oven for an additional 10 minutes and uh, they'll come out really wonderful. Now, not that I doubted you with how this was going to thicken up, but it, it has thickened up beautifully, hasn't it? We have a really nice, thick, rich gravy on this. It does. Yeah, it looks beautiful. And As and I said, there's a lot of starch within the onion and garlic. And I'm really yeah. surprised that there's not fat floating on the top. Well, that, that's, that's amazing too. If, 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 you, if, you, if, if you're familiar with roux, which is, which is um, clarified butter and flour, the flour soaks up the butter. So the same thing has actually yeah. happened in the pan with the curry. The starch from the onion and the garlic and the ginger has been sucked up by the fat from, from the lamb and, and the oil that we've used. So it, it, mm -hmm. it, it's making its own, uh, own thing in there. Now when we sauteed these, how much oil we had about? There was very little oil. There was only about uh, two tablespoons of oil inside of it. Nice. Okay, perfect. And I'd say that would be pretty good. It's already seared on the bottom. Okay. So now we can take them out, put it on the tray, and they can go right into the oven. So we're going to line these up here. And how long are we going to bake these for, Dennis? Approximately 10 minutes. Depends oh. on the thickness of it. Some are rather thick, some are thin. But once again, so it all goes if you want quick. them well done, well, 15 minutes. But please do not cook them medium while they're well done. <laughs> Or serve them Please. with ketchup. <laughs> don't do that. So, what do we call it? Bastardizing a good product? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we got some of these other loin chops here. And we'll be serving this with what, Dan? Well, you can serve that with a traditional uh, Greek style menu. You can serve that with, um, with your rice pilaf, with Greek salad, with uh, pita bread and tzatziki. You can have a really great. Greek fiesta oh, night at, in, in, your, in your home. A little bit yeah, of uh, retina, a little bit of ouzo. Yeah, we've got a little <laughs> bit of that. <laughs> That's basically it. Okay. Next we can do some stock. Padaki is ready to come out of the oven? Padaki is going to come out right now and okay. we're going to tray it up. And then we're going to go ahead with some stock and some chateau potatoes. That's oh, right. they look beautiful. They are beautiful.
they did come out rather nicely. Oh yeah, and they smell delicious. So we'll just quickly try that, mm -hmm. and then we can get on to our stock. Looks, looks lovely on the rosemary. I used to work with this one uh, Greek fellow, and almost every night after work, as you were talking about the yuzos and zambukas uh -huh. and burning coffee beans, boy, he just really went crazy on the padakia and, and pan-fried smelts with lots of lemon. Pan-fried smelts. And we won't waste any of this juice. We'll put that over top. Oh, that is because beautiful. Because that's the good stuff. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It smells wonderful. Let's just put that up there for now. Look oh, at that. Good. can hardly wait to try that. Okay, great. Now we're going to move on to some stock. Uh, if you remember, we have the fat from the lamb. That's right, the fell. We got some carrots in there from and the stock pot. There is a substantial amount of meat here. You, you, we don't want to put that into the stock. This can be used for soup, for scotch broth soup. Great. Um, so we're just going to rip this off. So Theor you, theoretically. <laughs> yeah, easier said than done. Sometimes you need a knife. I'm almost there. There we go. So you can see that that's quite an, quite an amount of meat. Yeah, it is. With the fat here, we will just cut it into some cubes so that it can fry up a little quicker. Put it into our pan, and away we go. Okay. I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Here. We will cook that until it's, until it's not burnt but quite crispy, uh -huh. and then we can add our leftover vegetables and we'll even put the brine left over from the souvlaki's right into it as oh, well. Oh, excellent. Okay. Uh, with this, we will cube it. You do that so well. <laughs> no wonder you don't let me do it. Oh, it just it's a time <laughs> saver. I got I got some really nice cutting for you. We got some chateau potatoes oh, for you. Oh, good, today. good. I can hardly wait. We'll put this up and that can be used for a soup on a later date. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay. Now we're going to be preparing potatoes, so we're going to flip the cutting board over just to keep it food safe and if you can cut that potato in half this way I'm just going to give my hands a wipe. Okay. Okay wonderful. Now what we're going to make is a chateau potato and what a chateau potato is is a barrel shaped potato. Uh -huh. So this is basically... You mean they don't grow like this? Is this what you're telling me? <laughs> no they don't, they don't grow like that. No. <laughs> so nice. how we're going to do this is there's two ways. One we can take a potato and make it make it short or we can make them long. So I think the longer one looks better. We'll cut it in half. Okay. And I will show you how to do the first one. So you're looking at the potato. This is going to be one side of it uh -huh. and you're looking at this. So kind of um, so you're seeing, dream of... You're seeing artwork in this potato, yeah, are you? <laughs> you see art. You're going, okay, you're going to get this from this in <laughs> okay. seven, seven or less cuts. Oh. So the okay. best way to do it is to take the top off and you start I'm from just work right along here with you. You start from the center, mm -hmm. you come out and then you go back in. Okay. Don't watch too carefully, just get busy over there. And then from the center again, going down along, out and back in, and you just keep doing that over and over and over. And seven. as you as you notice, well, seven. Some people do it in five. <laughs> as you notice the potato is Basically self-peeling itself, so that's yeah. kind of cool. You don't have to self-peeling potatoes. Worry about that. You got like that. That's basically what we have. Now, Dennis, for a novice, I think that's not too bad. You're going to pick that baby up and just recarve it anyhow, aren't you? I that's can awesome. Feel that's it good. in my bones. That's good. Okay, I'm take the top <laughs> off this. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for aesthetic wise. Yeah. <laughs> and look there at him go. go. You've just redesigned the whole thing. No, it's beautiful. Look at that. Okay. It's, it's all there. I'm gonna do, we'll, we'll do better this time. I can hear the stock, uh, the fat bubbling. I, uh, I can hear that. Searing away there. So I'm going to just... So that's going to make for a nice, rich brown gravy, isn't it? Or it can stock, make for a nice, rather. rich gravy. Or with people being on a Atkins diet, what you can do is just keep reducing it and reducing it and reducing it. And it'll self-thicken and become more flavorful and powerful. So mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have to add any flour or starch to it. Or you could just use it for your soup. If you were to add uh, mirepoix vegetables, uh, just uh, carrots, onions, celery, and some barley, and your lamb trimming, you've got yourself a beautiful scotch broth. Good. A little bit of rosemary and a little bit of uh, garlic. Okay, so. And I'm gonna stir that. We have our vegetables. We're gonna add it in, in the water. Okay, so 
We're gonna let that just simmer. We'll let that simmer. And this is what it will come out as. It's a beautiful, oh, it is rich, nice and rich, thick stock. Uh -huh. And what you can do with these potatoes now is actually drain a little of that juice on. Onto the potatoes and then just we're gonna just bake them. And we will bake them with this rich, wonderful stock. So they're gonna be a nice golden brown color. A nice beautiful golden brown color and the stock will actually caramelize onto the potato and it's gonna be a treat. Mm, looks beautiful. And that can go right into the oven. Okay. And then when we come back? We can start plate everything up and uh, we can show our, our and viewers how, how everything has turned out. And enjoy the dinner. And enjoy and okay. eat and so have some wine. Thank you for that. <laughs> So, Dennis, once again, it's been a lot of fun working with you, yes, and we've had a very productive afternoon, I think. We've got some beautiful dishes before us, ways with lamb. Mm. We've got the Madras curry and the lamb shanks. Now, the curry we're going to serve with the rice pilaf. I would, I would suggest the rice pilaf, basmati rice. Basmati rice. Yeah. And the lamb shanks with maybe a garlic roasted potato. Yes, roasted garlic smashed potato, okay. yeah, just to get that texture there uh -huh. smashed. And we have the Greek dish. Say it again for me. Padakia. Please. Padakia. Now that would be wonderful, I think, with uh, Greek lemon roast potatoes. Oh, you're absolutely and, right. Um, yeah, you can't fail on the lemon roast potatoes yeah. and pita and tzatziki. Yeah. Go go Some crazy on the Greek, Greek salad. Night. Little yeah. Greek salad. A little yeah. bit of retzina. Tzatziki. <laughs> yeah. Uzo, and we've Zambuka. got the beautiful lamb chops here. They've turned out so well. They look just fabulous. Those would be served with the chateau potatoes. That's correct. Yes. And we've got that beautiful array of roasted vegetables there. They look tremendous, and they would be well served with any of these dishes. Yes, we'll cover this on a later show on a barbecue show, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Good. But, um, so, so in serving wines, now we'd look for a fuller-bodied red wine with the with the chops and the shanks and. Yes, this, it was uh, highly suggesting to go with a, a robust, uh, heavy wine, a mm -hmm. robust, flavorful wine for, for your shanks and, and, and your padakias and your, and, your rack, and your rack of lamb. Always works in, for me. In, ter in terms of, of, of the curry, well, a very light wine or there you can never go wrong with a, <laughs> with a can of lager. <laughs> a can of beer and curry goes together like Americans and apple pie. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> so, so we have some people to thank. We need to thank Centennial Food Services yes, for providing... Yes, very in Vancouver yeah, and Victoria. Thank and you very much, Sean. Mary Lou Phillips, who has provided not only her kitchen so graciously, but also the wine that we're going to enjoy with us in just a little bit of time. Looking forward to that. Shannon, Cheers. thank Always you so fun. much. Hope to do it again soon. I hope so. Take care now.